Hey guys, welcome to my next Ghost of Tsushima Nightmare Story Mode Guide. In today's video, I will be talking about the Assassin class. Now, before I get into all the details about this guide, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been enjoying my previous video, where I showed you guys how to do a Nightmare Story run with a Samurai class. That video is doing so much better than I thought it would, and I'm very happy that you guys are enjoying the content that's in that video. So that being said, I decided I would make one more video just like that, but instead of Samurai, it would be for Assassin. And I don't really play Hunter or Ronin, so I, I'm probably not gonna make videos about those classes in the future. But it, not like it really matters, because I was able to secure a PS5 pre-order, so soon I'll be making content about Demon Souls and Call of Duty Cold War. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely subscribe. But I do plan on making more Ghost of Tsushima content in the future at some point, you know. But with the PS5 coming out, I'm just gonna be busy, <laughs> you know, playing that. And one thing I want to mention really quick before I get into the video is that I am using the Wireless Pulse 3D headset, which is specifically made for the PS5, but I am using it for the PS4 as of right now. So if you guys are interested in hearing what it sounds like, then just go ahead and listen a little bit or watch the whole video because I'm using it right now. This isn't a review for the headset, but overall I would say I'm very happy with the purchase. Now that being said, let's get into the video. I'm going to talk about my techniques first, then I'll talk about my gear and all the gear or all the stats I recommend that you guys use for the gear. Just keep in mind that in my opinion, I don't think Assassin is going to be the easiest class to run a Nightmare solo run with. I know there are different builds you can run with Assassin that you could say are overpowered, but this is going to be more of a traditional Assassin guide so this this guide is going to revolve more around like one-shotting enemies and with assassinations or at least doing very high damage um assassination attempts if, if that's what you call it so you this is going to be more of a stealth slash high damage you know assassination build okay so that being said if you guys are interested in running a solo or completing a solo run as fast as possible i would recommend you just check out my samurai video that I made before this one because I think you would have a lot easier of a time using the samurai class in my opinion but if you want to do a sam or if you want to do a solo run with a different class like if, you if you're interested in doing it with the assassin but you want more of a challenge then this would be like right up your alley because this does take a lot more um, <laughs> let's just say it takes more patience and a lot more planning and there's a lot less room for mistakes because you know unlike a samurai where you can just uh activate spirit pool and just heal yourself with assassin unless you have like the right legendary item you really can't heal yourself like whenever you want i'll get into that as i explain everything all the stats that i use and all the gear i'll explain all that in a little bit okay so first things first i want to talk about the techniques that i'm using for this assassin uh build I'm going to kind of go over them really briefly and kind of quickly and then I'll talk about them more after I tell you what I use. So technique number one, we're going to be using Toxic Vanish. Technique number two is going to be Super Strike. Technique number three is going to be Opportunist. And the final technique, this is going to be optional, okay? Um, I use Legendary because I do have a bomb that heals me if I'm within its vicinity when it goes off, like when it's doing damage to, or when it sticks to an enemy, if I'm near it, it heals me for a pretty decent chunk of health. So I am using that legendary item and I am using a legendary katana. So me personally, I really, like I prefer using legendary as a technique because that pretty much allows me to have a way to heal myself if I need it. Now I know you could just use that healing um, that healing ghost weapon item, I forget what it's called, the one that just heals you, you know, but you would have to sacrifice your smoke bomb for that, and we do not want to sacrifice smoke bomb. So, in my opinion, if you have the item that I'm talking about, like I showed it earlier when the, when the video started, the, the legendary bomb that heals you, like I would suggest you use that or at least give it a try because it really comes in handy like when you need it. Otherwise, if you don't have that, you, you'll do perfectly fine using the Chain Vanish technique. Okay, so Chain Vanish for the final technique is also very, very good, so don't stress about it if you don't have that legendary bomb that I have, all right? Now, I'm gonna take a step back and go over all of the, all of the techniques that I just mentioned, 
and technique number one toxic vanish uh we're gonna choose this over group vanish obviously because we are doing a solo run so we don't need the group vanish but toxic vanish is important because that is going to help you stagger enemy targets and when you stagger an enemy target that is going to synergize very well with um with your third technique which is opportunist so when you stagger an enemy and if you have opportunist as your third technique you will be able to do 50 percent bonus assassination damage all right so that's more damage also combined with the second technique which is super strike which is times two damage when attacking from a stealth so right there without even talking about any stats from your gear like right there you already have 250 percent bonus damage now that alone that should be you should be able to one shot a pretty good amount of enemies like you know the lower health ones but once you start stacking your uh, bonus stealth damage with your gear on top of your technique damage you'll be like really close to to um one shotting like very high health enemies especially if you use uh weakened darts from your blow dart or your, your blow gun but again i'll get into that a little bit later as well all right guys so the next thing i want to talk about is the stats and gear that i use for this assassin build now the first item i'm going to talk about is going to be the legendary master's katana this katana is going to give you the ability to choose any fighting stance against any enemy target this is going to give you a very distinct advantage because like i mentioned earlier the assassin class is very easy to kill especially since you don't have any like obvious ways to heal yourself again we don't want to sacrifice our smoke bomb for a healing ghost weapon and unless you have that healing sticky bomb i'll talk about here in a minute then you essentially have no ways to heal yourself so uh this katana is going to give you a advantage over every enemy you face by giving you the ability to stagger them a lot easier and when you stagger an enemy that basically just means you'll be able to take them out without the chance of you getting hit so it'll be less chance of you taking damage which is essentially going to increase your survivability so to say by a little bit now as for stats for the master's katana i am using melee damage stagger damage and you can either choose between burning blade poison or way of the flame obviously you don't need a extra stance because this katana has all of them by default anyways and a quick note about this stagger damage stat is i think that's very important because since you are going to be staggering enemies very often especially since you know you're able to by choosing any stance you want i think that's very important to have because you'll just be doing a lot of extra damage especially when stacked with the melee damage stat on the master's katana all right so for the next item we're going to be talking about the blowgun now the blowgun is something that is basically mandatory for every assassin or maybe not every assassin build but for this one specifically i would say it's very mandatory now the the main important thing about this item is going to be hallucination darts hallucination darts are essentially just gonna let you do damage without you having to do anything i know that sounds kind of boring but hey we're playing assassin and we got to play cheap sometimes right so you just got a hallucination dart a enemy and that enemy target will attack any nearby enemies essentially allowing you to take no damage from a distance and you know all, all from stealth so it's a very safe and effective method and that being said do not shun any of the other darts when it comes to poison darts and, and um, poison darts and weakened darts they definitely have their place all right so with poison darts you can stagger enemies Remember, when an enemy is staggered, your assassination damage will be even higher. And when you weaken an enemy, that's going to allow you to do even more damage. It's going to amplify your damage even more when doing assassinations or just hitting them in general. Now, a quick tip about the blowgun is that if you use Toxic Vanish, um, if you use your blowgun while you're invisible from Toxic Vanish, your blowgun will not... Uh, reveal your invisibility or it won't like you know what I'm saying like your, your visibility will, will stay intact and your blowgun will not like expose you so what you can do as a good combo is you can toxic vanish uh, stagger the enemy if they're not fully staggered then you can poison dart after you toxic vanish stagger them and then use uh, a weakened dart 
to amplify your damage even more. So if the enemy is staggered and they have a weakened dart applied to them and you, and you super strike them, your assassination damage is going to be crazy, crazy high. You'll be able to one shot even high health enemies. So that's a very good combo to use, especially when using... Uh, it's a good combo with the blowgun, I should say. So stats with the blowgun, stealth damage and stealth and hallucination darts. Stealth damage is going to be like the main uh, stat you're going to be wanting to stack as high as you possibly can with this assassin build. Remember, we're this is basically a assassination uh, assassin guide. So the higher your stealth damage, then it's just the easier easier your life is going to be with this build. And for the second stat, which is stealth, I chose to use that because, again, since this is revolving around assassinations, we are not going to be able to apply all this damage if we're exposed, right? So if enemy targets see us, we obviously can't assassinate them unless we like use smoke bomb or, or whatever or toxic vanish. But other, other than that, we want to make sure enemies don't see us so we can maintain our highest possible damage capability. So with stealth, it's just going to make it harder for enemies to detect us, all right? So blowgun, stealth damage, stealth, hallucination darts. Now for the next item, this is going to be the assassin charm. Also a very, I would say a mandatory item for this build, especially if you're doing like a one-shot build or whatever. Um, the main thing for this item is going to be choosing between chain vanish or hysteria. Now, I chose to leave those two as an option to choose from because they're both very good. Hysteria is going to allow enemy targets to hallucinate, just like with hallucination darts, if they are nearby a target that you just assassinated. So I think that would be very helpful, and I think that's a very cool ability. I just prefer to use Chain Vanish. It's just, they're both very good. It's just a preference thing. And keep in mind, if you are using the Chain Vanish uh, stat from the Assassin Charm, and you, you're using the Chain Vanish technique, those two Chain Vanish abilities uh, or stats, uh, they stack with each other. So you could essentially Chain Vanish three times, you know, get three easy assassinations. And that's very helpful for this uh, build. Now as for stats, again, stealth damage. You always want stealth damage. Make sure it's high as it, as it can possibly, possibly be. And for the second stat, we want cooldown reduction. Now, one quick thing to mention about cooldown reduction when it comes to the to the assassin charm is that cooldown reduction normally only reduces reduces the cooldown for the ghost weapon you apply it to but if you're using it for the assassin charm it's going to reduce the cooldowns for both of your ghost weapons so having cooldown reduction on your assassin charm is going to stack with the cooldown reduction stats for our ghost weapons which we are going to be using so that's going to essentially reduce our cooldowns for all of our abilities dramatically, which is gonna definitely increase your survivability and just make your life easier as a assassin, all right? So cooldown reduction, uh, stealth damage, and chain vanish or hysteria when it comes to the assassin charm. Now, next item is gonna be our ghost weapon number one uh, slot. That's gonna be our touch of heaven, our legendary touch of heaven sticky bomb. Now, this is gonna pretty much be our security blanket. It's gonna heal us, especially when we need it, and it's gonna you know, just give us a much easier time when uh, we're low on health. So we can just use this, heal back up a little bit, and it's just gonna make everything a lot easier. Now, for the stats, again, cooldown reduction. We want damage increase, and the most important stat for this legendary sticky bomb is gonna be increased radius. So, if you're not within the radius of this explosion when it goes off, you will not get healed. So you wanna make sure you're nearby so that you get that healing effect. And with the increased radius stat on the sticky bomb, you're essentially gonna alleviate that problem a little bit, right? So that way you don't have to be as close if you use it. And you know, it's just gonna be a very good, uh, a good way to also do more damage to other nearby enemies, even if they're far away from each other. So. Even though I mostly look at this legendary sticky bomb as a healing item, it is still a pretty good damage dealer, all right? And you can still use it primarily for damage in certain situations if you want. So it's a very versatile ghost weapon. 
Now for the final ghost weapon, we are going to be using the smoke bomb. This is very, very important. Now for the stats, we're going to be using stealth damage. Obviously, we want more and more stealth damage, cooldown reduction, and the lucky perk. Now, I know it's kind of underrated to use the lucky perk, but I think it's more useful than any of the other options for the smoke bomb. So my reasoning is because if you use the lucky perk, which is a 15% chance to uh, proc. You guys know what that means, right? Proc, or am I just a nerd? You guys, you guys are nerds too. You guys should know what that means. Or I should say activate. <laughs> if the lucky perk stat activates or procs on the smoke bomb, which is a 15% chance, that means you'll be able to use the smoke bomb again immediately after using you know, the first smoke bomb. So if that activates again, you'll be able to use two smoke bombs right after each other and that's going to be like a huge deal. That's going to save you a lot of trouble. You'll be able to take out so many enemies so fast, you know, very quickly. And I know 50% chance seems kind of low, but I mean, honestly, when it does happen, it's it's really cool, you know, so. Let's see, so that's all of my techniques. That's all of my gear and my stats. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I guess I'll do a quick recap just so you guys like understand. Um, let's see, technique, toxic vanish, super strike, opportunist, legendary, if you have the healing item I have, the sticky bomb, or chain vanish. And when it comes to gear, again, matches katana, you want the melee damage, stagger damage, burning blade, poison, or way of the flame. Again, Master's Katana is going to give you that uh, stance option to counter every enemy you encounter. Blowgun, stealth damage, stealth. Don't uh, don't underestimate the power of all of your darts, all of them, even poison darts, weakened darts, especially hallucination darts. They're going to make your life a lot easier as a assassin. Assassin Charm, you want either Chain Vanish or Hysteria. That's optional. Stats, stealth damage, cooldown reduction. Remember, cooldown reduction for the Assassin Charm is going to stack with both of your Ghost Weapons. Ghost Weapon number one, Touch of Heaven, Legendary Sticky Bomb. You want cooldown reduction, damage increase, and increased radius. And for the final Ghost Weapon, Ghost Weapon number two, you want Stealth Damage, cooldown reduction, and the Lucky Perk. Remember, if that Lucky Perk procs, it's going to be awesome because you'll just be able to take out the hella enemies all at the same time, and you'll be able you know, to do it without taking any damage. So that's awesome. Now, while we're on the subject of talking about my gear and stats and all that, one thing I forgot to mention while I was talking about my legendary sticky bomb item is that I'm pretty sure that sticky bomb requires one resolve to use because I noticed multiple times in this gameplay that when I had three, three resolve and I was about to use my ultimate ability, I realized I only had two. And I think my sticky bomb costs one resolve because it's a legendary item or whatever and not that it's a big deal i, I still think it's very worth to use because it heals you but just so you guys know if you guys want to try out this guide that i'm showing you just know that the sticky bomb for some reason costs one resolve even though the description of the sticky bomb doesn't say anything about that which is kind of weird so yeah i mean it's not that big of a problem because let's be real the ultimate ability for assassins isn't even like that good I, the only positive thing i can see about the assassins ultimate is that you can essentially like teleport while you're using it you know like you can attack through the walls and stuff like kind of face through it from a long distance and kind of teleport from one enemy to the next that's like really the only thing i see being good about it so i guess if you were like super smart you could use that ultimate ability to get out or get away from a group of enemies and like latch onto a different one and then like get away. Besides that, I mean, it's not even that good of a damage dealer. I'd rather use sticky bombs, so whatever. Man, so at this point I've talked about everything and unfortunately for you guys, I'm gonna try and keep talking for another 10 minutes and we'll see how that goes because, man, this took me an extra, what, took me an extra 13 minutes to complete this Nightmare Solo Run in comparison to my samurai nightmare solo run which only took me like 20 minutes because at this point where i am right now in the gameplay i was like dude i'm not gonna fuck this up and have to start over because i guys i was seriously trying i was like i want to start this shit over i just want to get this gameplay recorded so i can make my commentary later you know so 
I did that and I was happy, but I mean, not gonna lie, for the rest of the gameplay, I kind of had to. I kind of was running around a little bit just to make sure I didn't die and make. I was making sure I was attacking only on my terms, you know, making sure I was playing safe. Honestly, it's not. Normally, for any type of game, I really like playing that stealthy type or a, that assassin based character or whatever. Like, I think there's something cool about being an assassin, but in this game specifically, in my opinion, Samurai is just way more fun. It's, you can you can do solo runs so much faster. And even when we're not talking about nightmare solo runs, just in general, like if you're doing survival or like the raid, do you playing that Samurai that I made a video about, like that Samurai guide? <laughs> Dude, like you are not gonna die. I, I can easily defend uh, those defense areas and survival mode like by myself like my team can be all somewhere else and i can defend one point like no problem so when it comes to samurai that's easily my favorite class in the game ronin the hunter you know i just don't feel it that's why i said earlier this is this is going to be like my last guide probably like who knows about the future but ps5 is coming out i'll be taking a break from this at least for a little bit playing demon souls playing some cold war I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait to play a console that isn't loud as fuck. And that's the reason that I record my gameplay and I make my commentary later is because I don't want to fucking trouble you guys and listen to that stupid loud fan, the, the airplane fan, you know, the PS4 noise because, God, it's, it's so bad. It's so terrible. So I, I record the fucking gameplay and then I have to make the commentary later as I watch my own gameplay. So that's what I'm doing right now. Out of, out of respect for you guys, I don't want you guys to have to listen to that shit. So. <sighs> yeah, so I'm watching myself play and I'm trying to remember what the hell I was thinking because I don't know what the hell I'm doing right now. I was just, I think I was nervous at this point What I'm 22 minutes into the recording and I'm like, I do not want to restart this shit. And I was doing this at, I was doing this at like midnight and I was determined to, to get it done. I was like, man, I don't want to go to sleep knowing I didn't finish this because, you know, Life gets in the way, and I was like, I was doing, I was dealing with shit in life, and you know, work, just being busy. So, I wanted to get this done, make the commentary, just for you guys, and yeah. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing. I'm playing so safe right now. Let's see, sticky bomb. See, it does cost one resolve. Stagger his ass, take him out. There you go. That's how you do it. You know, something else I learned about Assassin recently is that <laughs> I thought when you smoke bombed, you would only get out of the enemy's sight one time. I didn't know if you re-entered it, <laughs> you would disappear again. So I just like learned that. Knowing that is like such a big deal because you can just keep assassinating all enemies around you. It's like so easy. This is the situation I was kind of talking about earlier where abilities are on cooldown. I'm low on health, I'm nervous, I'm walking around blocking, I don't, I don't even know if someone is fucking here about to attack me, like all these invisible dudes, I was like nervous as fuck to just walk around, like one hit and I'm dead, I'd be so pissed. <laughs> like a fucking blind person just blocking, it's hilarious. Ugh. Healing drum was lucky. You know, I remember though, later in the gameplay, uh... I wasted all of my hallucination darts on like one group of enemies because I was like, oh, this is the last group of enemies. I don't need these darts. And then I kill them and then there was like one more group of enemies and I was like, fuck, I just wasted my hallucination darts. I mean, if I didn't waste those hallucination darts at the end, you'll, you'll, you'll see. I could have finished this easily like a couple minutes earlier at least, so. But you know, Assassin is still really fun. This uh, this weekly modifier was annoying as hell though. Like, if I didn't assassinate an enemy, I had to burn them with my blade. So I had to wait till my blade applied that fire effect to officially kill them. Otherwise that, the only way I killed all these enemies was from assassinations. That was like really annoying. <laughs> Man, it sucks because uh, 
when I first played Assassin, I thought that was gonna be like my my main, you know, my main class. But as soon as I played Samurai, I was just like, no, sorry, Assassin, I just can't. You're not, you can't kill stuff as fast, and you're not as tanky. Really, that's what it is. Like I feel, I feel weak when I play the Assassin class. I feel like I'm exposed, a little bit more defenseless. Like when I play a Samurai, I feel like you know you got some serious big dick energy. You know, you're just fucking. You get in there, kill everything like you don't give a shit, whatever, no biggie. Feel like a badass movie star, you know? Assassin, it's like, oh no, dude, I gotta play safe. I can't fuck around. If I make one mistake, I'm halfway dead, you know? So. Shit. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. Like, I'm just. I don't even know what I'm doing right here. Just buying myself time. I think this is the, yeah, this is the part where all the enemies were there, and I was like, all right, I can easily do this with all my hallucination darts, so that's what I do. This is not going to be entertaining at all, but, you know, that's the assassin for you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hallucination darts are cool and all because of this, but it's just not fun. I think I remember when I did this, I was like, shit, what are people going to think when they see me just doing nothing? Is this, like, high-quality fucking, like, content right here? Just just this? Probably not. But I was like, I do not give a shit. I'm not going to restart this just to show off to my <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> like, I could have gone in there and I could have probably killed them, you know, but I'm not risking it. Yep, yeah, just waiting. You know, guys, my girlfriend says the horns on the assassin, like the horns that I have on my character right now, look lame. And I'm like, dude, no, it does not look fucking lame. I think the assassin looks badass as fuck. The horns look cool. I think it's very unique. You know, it's it stands out. That's what I like when it comes to, uh, like, um, cosmetics in this game. Like how you look. As long as you look different and you stand out, that's what's cool to me. It's not like. I'm not trying to look like a fucking princess or some shit, you know what I mean? Like, you look like a badass. I mean, if this dude walked up to you, you'd be scared of shit, right? Like, this fucking warrior assassin dude. You wouldn't be calling him lame, right? <laughs> Let's see, I don't remember what I did at this point. I was thinking about it, I was like, should I assassinate him? No, nah, instead I play like a pussy. I'm like, nah, I'll just hallucination dart him play really really safe because remember I thought these were the last enemies I wonder if I can see I wonder if I'll be able to see my reaction once I kill all these enemies and see how like disappointed I was when there was still more enemies to kill <laughs> see if there's like any any like reluctance in my movement damn I still didn't assassinate them I was wasting all my fucking darts guys don't do what I, don't do what I'm doing right now it's just I could have easily killed these dudes. I was just being stupid. Because in my mind, I was like, all right, I got this in the bag. And, you know, that's when you die, right? When you're all confident and cocky. You just get in there and you just get shit on by some normie warrior. And then it's a waste of a half hour. Who's going to win? Uh. Oh. So close. Oh, shit on. Then you get assassinated. That's your award. Yeah, at this point, I was like, fuck. I'm fucked. I'm out of darts. And I knew they were invisible. So, yeah, I remember this. I, I knew they were invisible, so I was like, fuck this. I'm leaving. I literally ran, I think. I ran all the way around just to get away, just so I can, like, think of a plan or something. Oh, my God. I was so fucking nervous. There you go. Half his health right there, good. I kind of wasted that bomb, but I used it because I knew it was going to stagger or like, you know, disrupt all the enemies around me and I'll be able to see them. This is why smoke bomb is so good. I'm just, just mowing through them, the assassinations. There you go. Choose the right stance. Counter him. 
<laughs> like I'm so nervous to attack. Man, that ultimate is so trash. There's no fucking damage. Maybe I'm missing something. Is that good for something else besides damage? Like, and besides teleporting? Like, I know it's good for getting away if you use it like that, but... I honestly think the Assassin Ultimate should be buffed a little bit. Like, it's... It's, like, laughable compared to all of the other classes' ultimate abilities, you know? Like, Samurai and Hunter can just destroy hella targets so quickly, you know, so fast. And Ronan, you know, you can... Fucking... You can bring people back to life. That's so useful. Yeah, so here I am, running all the way around, waiting for my cooldowns to come back. Not playing like a badass. If I was playing Samurai, I would be. I mean, you guys know. If you guys watched my last video, I was playing like a badass, because, you know, I can. But unfortunately, Assassin is not like that. But, you know, when you get bored of a uh, Samurai, or Hunter, or Ronin, you can, you can play like this. I mean, it's fun in its own way, you know, playing as a assassin, but I guess I'm very impatient, so I prefer to just get in there and kill everything, because that's just, it's just cooler to me. I don't know how that made any sense at all. Like, I killed him with the poison dart? I can't complain, though. Headshot. Almost, almost there. Staggered. There we go, we staggered. Let's do the damage. There we go. It's pretty good amount of damage. I saw my abilities, there we go. Smoke bomb. Taken out, easy peasy. This guy's making me nervous. Half health. Damn, he has a lot of health. Just ring around the rosy over here. I think I was trying to break line of sight so that I could do a assassination drop on him or some type of assassination, but he kept his eyes on me so I couldn't do that. Pretty much just waiting for my abilities to get off cooldown at this point. I mean guys, if I hallucination dart this dude right here, oh my god. <laughs> I wouldn't have done, I would not have done, uh, or had to do anything. He would have killed, like, most, if not all of the other targets, you know, just by himself. He does so much damage. So that was, like, a big mistake on my part, but luckily I was still able to fucking do it. There you go, I think he's dead now. Thank god. Yeah, so there's my Nightmare Solo Assassin run. Um, to any of you guys who actually stuck around to hear me talk, you know, I appreciate you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like, if you like this content, you know, like, subscribe. I will be I will be making more Ghost of Tsushima content in the future. But again, I will be playing Demon Souls, you know, Call of Duty Cold War. So, like and subscribe if you're into that. And thanks for watching. See ya.